Alright, lesson 2.6, applying the trigonometric ratios. Um, this one's going to be a little bit shorter uh, lesson um, because really we have all the tools that we need already to do this section. Um, in, the, in the past questions, what they've done is they've kind of given you hints or even told you specifically what trigonometric ratio to use. Now you're going to have to use them without being told. Uh, in addition, we're also going to um, learn what it means to solve a triangle, and then we'll look at uh, maybe a couple difficult or a little bit more difficult questions on the, on the back picture. All right, so uh, here we go. Notes. Solving a triangle means to determine the measures of all the angles and um, the lengths of all the sides in the triangle. Any of the three trigonometric ratios we've learned can help us solve a right triangle. So whenever you see solve a right triangle, I just want you to think, I need to know everything. I need to know every angle that's not there and every side length that's not there. It's up to you how you want to go about doing it. Sometimes you might be able to use Pythagoras. Sometimes you can just use sim simple um, subtraction when you're looking for an angle. It's up to you. You just need to know everything. And so just to review our Sokotoa again, when we're dealing with sine, we have, of course, the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine is the ka adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is the oa or the toa with the opposite over adjacent. So we have so ka toa, and if a is our reference angle, which it is here, we would have this being our opposite side. Uh, this is our adjacent, and your hypotenuse. Okay. Let's try a couple examples. Um, this first one's really easy. Uh, I actually would, in, would like you guys to try this one on your own. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that and then check uh, at the end. So when it says solve, remember, you've got to look for both of those angles and then this side length. That's what we need to do. Okay. So uh, what do I want to find first? Let's find this missing angle uh, up here. So, okay, let's see. Well, what ratio am I going to have to use to do that? Well. I'm going to have to use the tangent ratio because I need to, in order to find an angle, I have to use the two sides that I have, any two sides. Now, if I had the hypotenuse, I could have used that, um, but uh, I don't right now, so I'm going to use the 11 and the 7. So I have the tangent of angle K is equal to my opposite 11 over my adjacent 7. So that tells me that K is going to be equal to the tangent inverse. Remember, you have to use the inverse when you're looking for angles of 11 over 7. And that tells me, get my calculator out here. Tangent inverse of 11 over 7. For angle K is 57.5 degrees. Okay, to get angle N, it's not exactly rocket science, I would just take 180 degrees in any triangle minus the 9 degree angle that we have and then the angle that we just found, and you will see that you get 32.5 degrees. So, so far now, since it's solved the triangle, I've found two out of the three things that I need to. Now the last one I need to do is Kn. Since you have the angles, um, you could use trigonometry. I'm just for something different here. I'm going to use uh, Pythagoras, right? Just to show you guys that you have some flexibility. So that being my a, b, and then this side being my c, I'll have seven squared plus eleven squared is equal to I'll call this Kn squared. Forty-nine plus one twenty-one is equal to Kn squared. That gives me one hundred and seventy. And that means Kn is equal to the square root of 170, which is to one decimal place. Uh, square root of 170 uh, to one decimal place, that would be 13.0. And that would be in centimeters. Make sure you always have your units. Notice how I've been putting degrees up here for those guys. All right. So those are your three answers. Um, one thing I do want to point out, and this is maybe the most important thing of this example, is imagine if you had found out C right away, and then you used maybe, um, like if you have all three side lengths, you can use any trig ratio you want to get that angle, let's say angle K right there. I would not want you to use, um, let's say, the sine or cosine ratio to, to get that angle. Now I want you to think about why that might be. Um, let me pause it here. 
uh, hopefully you've thought about it a little bit, but what um, <clears throat> what the problem is is that since we've rounded with this side, like you would have written 13.0, well that actually isn't 13.0, it's close to 13.0, but when you round there, that's going to end up throwing that angle off. So that's why we want to use always the information that we know for sure. I know for sure that that side's 7 and that side's 11. All right, so try not to use rounded answers unless you have to. Let's go to the next page. Solve this triangle, give the measures to the nearest tenth where necessary. Uh, for this one, I want you to try it on your own. I'm going to force you to do this one uh, because I'm just going to give you the final answer. So I'm going to look when I uh, have you uh, on the hot seat for the, uh, the work done for these. So I will tell you what your answers are. Angle J is going to be uh, 51 degrees. Uh, what else do they not give you? They tell you that HJ is equal to 14.3 centimeters. And GH is equal to 11.1 centimeters. So I want to make sure you can do that on your own. Those are the solutions. You can go ahead and give that a try on your own. All right. Uh, one that's a little bit more difficult, and I will do together, is uh, is number three. You're more than welcome to try this one on your own. Uh, so let's get started. A small table has the shape of a regular octagon. The distance from one vertex to the opposite vertex measured through the center of this table is approximately 30 centimeters. There is a strip of wood vernier veneer uh, around the edge of the table. What is the length of the veneer to the nearest centimeter? And actually, if I come to think of it, I think I might have assigned you this question exactly. So if, if I did, you don't have to do it. Um, well, a little bit of work we got to do here. All right, the first thing that I notice is this, and I'll write it down as a little bit of a note for you. Since the table is a regular octagon, congruent isosceles, hope you remember what isosceles means. It means that two of the sides are the same of a triangle. Isosceles triangles can be formed. Okay, so what I mean is that if I, let's say, extend down a triangle like so, and like so, I know that these sides are the same because they're just radii. All right? Now, I know that those radii are, if that diameter was 50 or 30, this has to be 15 and 15. Okay. Second note I'll make. Since there are eight sides, the angles, or eight triangles, I guess you would say, the angles at the middle So what I'm talking about is these angles here, here, going all the way around. There'd be eight of them. All right. We can say that that angle right in there is going to be 360 degrees divided by eight, which tells you that, that angle is 45 degrees. So I can label this one as 45 degrees. Okay, good. So we're starting to get somewhere. All right. Well, that's very important because now what I can do, and excuse me, I'm just going to erase this to make it a little bit more clear, is I do know that that top angle is 45 degrees. Well, if I extend what we can kind of call like an altitude right there, that makes a 90 degree angle, even though it doesn't look like it. And now I can say that that side is equal to that side. And since that whole angle is 45 degrees, I can say that that angle on one side now is 22 and a half degrees. And now I'm looking OK. Because what I can do now is I can find out what this side, let's call it, I don't know, x is. Once I find that side x, then I can determine the, um, the perimeter of this uh, thing, or what do they call it, the length of the veneer. All right. So in order to find that side, you have everything that you need to know. I have my reference angle, I have my opposite side, and I have my hypotenuse. Well, what combines opposite and hypotenuse? That would be sine. So the sine of 22. 0.5 degrees is equal to my opposite x over my hypotenuse 15. Okay, how do I know that is my hypotenuse? Of course, it's opposite the 90 degree angle. In order to get x by itself, I'll move the 15 to the other side. So we have 15. The sine of 22.5 is equal to x. And hammer that into your calculator. We got 15. Come on. 15. The sine of 22.5 is equal to. 5.74025. Now I'm going to write down a couple of those decimal places because I'm not done right now and I don't want to, uh, I don't want to round 4025. That should be enough. All right, so we'll keep it like that. Now, if you recall, I found out what x is. Now, 
we know that there are eight sides. All right, so I've only figured out half of a side. So if I want to figure out how many x's there are, well, that would be another x there, another x, another x. I have eight sides and two x's in each side. That means I need to take that x and multiply it by 16. So I'm going to take 5.74025 and multiply it by 16. Maybe I better just review uh, why I'm doing that again. Remember, I found out what x is. Okay. Um, there are eight sides of that, so you could have done it this way, or you could have actually maybe multiplied it by two just to get that whole side, and then multiplied it by eight. I'm going to multiply it by 16. Okay. So we do that. We are going to get, I can just take my calculator, I'll keep that answer in there. So if I just go times, it keeps answer, and I go times 16. And as our final answer, we get 92 feet. All right, so the perimeter of that uh, small table is approximately 92 feet. Well, so that concludes this lesson. Um, it wasn't really too hard. The real only thing I wanted to stress here is that when it says solve a triangle, make sure you understand that means get all the uh, angles and side lengths and then you're off to the races. Um, that's about it.